My question to the panel is, on Saturday, we buried my father after struggling for 10 years against the CSG industry and Link Energy. So when? When will farmers be given the right to say no to the CSG companies from coming onto their land? When? Thank you. I'll come to the panel in a, in a second. Helen, thank you very much for your question. We appreciate that. And, uh, our sympathies go to you and your family at this very difficult time. For viewers at home who may not be uh, aware, uh, George Bender was a 68-year-old farmer who took his own life 10 days ago after a 10-year battle against CSG on his land. Uh, the story's obviously rocked the community um, here in Toowoomba. Joel Fitzgibbon, the question that his daughter puts to you, when are farmers going to be given the right to say no to coal seam gas extraction happening on their land? Yeah, well, thanks, Tom, and of course I join with you in extending my condolences to Helen and the family. It's a, a very sad case. I, I don't know all of the detail, but of course, uh, everyone across the nation knows uh, basically the, the circumstances. Look, this is a very difficult question. Uh, we've been dealing with, I'm, a, I'm the member for Hunter in the Hunter Valley, and I've been dealing with land use conflict uh, for many years. I have a lot of coal mining, some CSG, but I have enormous, uh, a, a large agriculture sector, thoroughbred breeding, viticulture, uh, the list goes on, and uh, some of those coal mines are getting very close to some of those sustainable uh, industries. I I've always had the view, even though I'm a strong supporter of the coal mining industry, that we can't allow any of those industries to develop at the expense of our sustainable, sustainable industries. I mean, the coal mines, CSG might be with us for 100 years maybe, but our sustainable industries uh, hopefully will be there to sustain us for many thousands of years. So that's the first point I'd like to make. This entry into land thing is a very difficult one, so I'm not avoiding the question, but it's a state-based uh, issue. Um, and, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I think that's a cop-out. Well, no, no, I'm, well, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> I will, I'll come to you in a sec, Katie, and I'll, no, you, I'll let you finish your point. I mean, the, the point is you, there that is, that is Labor state government here in Queensland. Yeah, no, it is I wasn't, no, I, I prefaced my remarks, but I'm not avoiding uh, the question, but it is a state-based issue, and it's a, it's, it's a, a complex one because our, our, our country uh, has um, enjoyed enormous wealth um, through the extraction of coal and iron ore and other commodities, and now CSG. And uh, it's been a tenet of our, or foundation of our legal system uh, for all, all of our history that uh, companies wanting to exploit that will have access to those resources under the land uh, of others. So I, I think my short answer is, if you like, that aspect of it, in my view, to be honest, is not going to change any time soon because the extraction of those resources are too significant to the national economy. I think that's the honest answer. But hang on, hang I'll, on. I'll come to Katie Noonan. Thank you, thank you. I understand there's a lot of passion around this issue, but we would need to hear uh, from all our panelists. Thanks, thanks, Katie. Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm not a polit I'm, I'm, I'm not a politician. I'm just an average Aussie like everyone else. And I think the CSG drama was something that's so big and depressing that I kind of put my head in the sand for quite a few years because I just was like, to me it just seems so incredibly stupid uh, on so many levels. Um, and I just can't, uh, the, the state government has let down everyone here and everyone in this state for years and I, I think palming it off to making it a state problem is, as I said, a cop-out. It's a national problem. We can't survive without farmers. Farmers aren't allowed to say no to these multinational companies that come in into their land that they've had for generations. They don't know the health impacts. They don't know the water impacts. Poor George, you know, the, the tragedy there is so obvious. It's, it is a matter of national importance. It can't so, keep on being part of Sorry, Tom, if you're on a national, I want to come to you there. Isn't that, isn't that the point, too, that is a... Unity ticket, largely, or, or there's bipartisan support uh, for these industries. Your response to what Katie But And said also, there. doesn't all the money for the particular stuff around here, we don't get it. The state government gets like a royalty, but most of it goes overseas. You're not getting it, I'm not getting I'll it. I'll come to Fiona Nash uh, to respond, yeah. please. Right. And I'll get to that. But I, I first want to extend my condolences as well and, and join with, with you guys in doing that. The answer's simple. Farmers should be able to say no. And state governments should change whatever needs to be changed so that they can say no. But that's why not your party's vote? policy. But that's, please, but that's my that's view. That's why that one is my please, please, view. I just and 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 that, that is my view. I was asked for my view on this, and that is my view. And that's they should be honest. If anybody puts themselves in the position of being a farmer 
on a piece of land to not have the right to say no, in my view, is wrong. Now, Joel, sometimes you have different views to your party. We don't have a definitive view around this because it is a state issue, but I'm giving you my very clear view that that's what it should be. Do you prosecute that point of view uh, in, in, your, in your party room and to, Absolutely into your, your I colleagues? Do. Absolutely, I do. But as National I do. Health Minister, why can't you recognise it as a national health disaster? Well, actually, <laughs> on the health issue, I'm sorry, I need to come to this. If uh, possible, on the question of health, our next question uh, comes from Karen Orty. Karen. Multiple international peer-reviewed medical reports confirm the health Im impacts among residents close to gas infrastructure. In the gas fields around Chinchilla, our children's noses are bleeding. They have rashes and they can't sleep for the headaches. In March 2013, Queensland Health recommended measurement of the total gas field emissions and the exposure of those of, and the exposure of the residents to those emissions. Two and a half years have passed. The health impacts continue and nothing has been done. Fiona Nash, what are you going to do? Fiona Nash. Thanks, Dan. Well, firstly, I don't agree that nothing's being done. The Department of Environment is doing exactly work around that at the moment. Yes, they are. Yes, they are around in the health impacts okay, of I've, CSG I've from the chemicals. They are. But th there's no doubt we need to do more. I'm a big supporter of mining where it's appropriate. And where it's appropriate and where it works, where there's no impact on prime ag land and where there's no risk to aquifers, it should go ahead for the reasons that Joel's pointing out of the benefits to the economy. But where there are health impacts, we need the work to be done to show us. Now, I know that there is existing work already, but we need to build on that to get a clear and proper picture exactly of what these health impacts are. And from my view, in all of this, we should take the precautionary principle, we should be conservative, and things should be on hold until they can proven, be proven not to have an impact, in my view. Uh, Paul Antonio, I want to come to you. The, uh, the, the sad death of uh, George Bender prompted Senator Glenn Lazarus to call for a uh, Royal Commission into this issue and a moratorium on all CSG activities until that, uh, the results of that commission are released. Your thoughts on, on that suggestion and also, I guess, your, your personal stake in, in this particular issue? Well, look, uh, I'd also share, share the concerns of the Bender family about it and my deepest sympathy to each and every one of you. Look, I've been uh, very concerned. I think my, I've gone on record over a number of occasions, uh, firstly, about the very best agricultural land in the Toowoomba Regional Council area, which is a target, a target for the gas companies. It's that highly developed irrigation land along the Condamine River, and I don't personally think they ought to touch it. Mm. That's my view. <laughs> I, have, I have friends uh, who don't agree with my stance, but it's been consistent since day one. Uh, look, the, the other thing that sort of scared me a little bit, I was listening to a presentation by a gas company once in my hometown of Mulmerin, depends very heavily on underground water to keep the intensive animal industries going. 140, 150 jobs, the Hall family, once again another iconic family doing their work there. They talked about dewatering the Walloon coal measures. Now I don't know whether they've got a different meaning on dewatering, but when I challenged them on that, they suddenly found a different meaning to dewatering. Dewatering means to me taking that water away, destroying that other industry. I'll say one thing to, to wind up. When the history of this region is written in a hundred years time, the resource sector will be about a blip on the screen. Agriculture has been dominant from day one and is a critical thing in the future. We need to preserve it. Jan Thomas, I want to come to you. You're keen to see greater research into this area from uh, universities like the one that you're the vice chancellor of. And, and again, my condolences and indeed um, my heart goes out to communities generally. The resilience of communities is, is very strong in Queensland, but it's at a breaking point for many reasons. And this is one of the reasons that's adding to, um, to the challenges that our communities face. Uh, and and I, th I, I want to just, um, I, I guess, bring it back to um, the, one of I, what I think is one of the biggest global challenges that we have 
um, and that is around clean food and clean water security. Mm. Uh, that is something that uh, we will look for in coming generations and centuries as really something to that's a treasure and Australia will need to hold on to its food and hold on to its clean water um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a treasure. And we have right underneath us here the Great Artesian Basin uh, as one of the largest underground water sources, uh, stretches across much of Queensland and into the Northern Territory in South Australia. Um, now, as a, as a clean water source, that will be something that's essentially a jewel for Australia mm -hmm. that we need to hold for generations to come. Mm -hmm. And we also have, through, our, uh, through various uh, reasons, including the urban sprawl, uh, challenges to some of our richest agricultural land, which will produce our clean food of the future. And so clean food and clean water security is something that I think every Australian needs to be concerned about. It will become, if it's not now, an absolutely precious commodity. So we need to make sure that whatever we do, we um, invest in research uh, that um, underpins um, making sure that that is sustainable. Social science and science research to preserve that for future generations. Uh, our our university is doing it, as is other universities. We need to make sure that science continues to make sure that all of our industries um, can um, guarantee that our food and water, our soil um, maintains its um, capacity to grow clean, clean food for the future, that our water remains uh, usable and clean for the future, uh, and that we have um, uh, the capacity for multiple industries to cohabit. Uh, I just, we do need to move on in a, in a second, but I just very quickly I want to get a response from uh, both the politicians on the panel about your response to Glenn Lazarus's suggestion of a Royal Commission into this issue. Well, I absolutely agree that there'll be some projects that can be undertaken without a threat to water and other resources, and some which will not. And those which pose any sort of a threat should not proceed. But I think Katie was a little bit unfair saying I was flogging things off referring to the state government. We do have a constitution. Mm. The Commonwealth has certain powers and the states have certain powers, including those over access to land. Now, John Howard, to his credit, as Bob Hawke did uh, with the Gordon Below Franklin Dam all those years ago, found a way of using the Commonwealth's power to reach further into some of these issues. So he produced in the EPBC Act a, a, a trigger on flora and fauna. So the Commonwealth, for the first time, had some say in some of these mining projects, for example. We very recently extended that uh, to include a water trigger. So that any project, any CSG project in Queensland where there's a water threat, the decision now has to go to an independent scientific committee in Canberra and has to secure the approval uh, of the Commonwealth Minister. So we are trying to reach uh, further in, there's no doubt about that, but these are, these are very difficult issues. Fiona Nash. I'm not convinced that a Royal Commission would do what I think people would be asking it to do, which is get a better understanding of what the actual impacts of CSG are. I think there's better ways to do that. I think it is through research. I think it is through greater independent scientific work around really determining what those impacts are. And I do have to j just say to Katie, just to yeah, just to, to say, you said earlier that you know I don't care about farmers, and I've really got to pull you up on that. No, no, no. no, I, no that word never. Those that sentence oh, did not. Sorry, come I thought you mouth. said why don't I you said, care about this farmers? Is a you are the national health minister. Oh, okay. And. The health implications, as indicated by the question over there, the obvious mental health mm. implications that are indicated by this tragedy in our community, Absolutely. I just can't see how that doesn't become... I mean, look, I'm not a politician, but for me, this is a national disaster. And I th mm. I'm going to give the final word, actually. I'd like to come back to Helen Bender, if possible. Helen, if I could come back to you. Um, Listening to the response from the panel, I'd be interested to know if you're, uh, you're satisfied or your thoughts or your reflections on, on what this panel had to say uh, to your question. One of the last things my father said was, no one is listening. Why am I wasting my time? So I don't think you are listening. I don't think anyone is listening. I don't think the nation is listening. And certainly I don't think any single one of you politicians have listened, nor cared, nor want to care. You're a turntable. You walk in, you walk out. You walk the walk, you talk the talk and you're just here for show, you're not listening. You have not once come out. Come and talk to this lady. Come and have a look at the effects of her children. Then you might make a real decision, you might actually make a change. But right now, no one is listening. Okay, well, it's a, quite a challenge. I'm sorry, I understand you'd like to respond to that, but we do need to keep moving on. Thank you again.